G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a suboptimal bloodied gas minigun with two other legendary effects that I won't bother mentioning because they're kind of useless on a weapon like this. But it's a three star, so, you know, the novelty value is there, I suppose. Now, I haven't used the gas minigun since the one wasteland damage nerf happened, but I think it'll be a little bit redeemed by the end of this because this thing left a very poor impression on me when I first used it. I had a two shot fire rate one which crushed against mobs because of magic damage and all that bullshit. But when I tried to face a Scorched Beast Queen with it, it just didn't do anything. So left a very poor taste in my mouth and sort of uh, made all of the Gauss miniguns, to my mind, kind of useless. Because I like versatility in my weapons. And, you know, this thing couldn't do anything that a bloodied fire rate light machine gun at the time couldn't do better. So, you know, what's the point of grinding for this thing and all of the reputation and the bullion? Well, it just wasn't there. You just get a Blade Fire 8 minigun, and you'll have a better performing weapon. But maybe it has been redeemed since the next couple of patches. And I think the base damage on this thing is going to be very strong, because um, you're going to have the uh, multipliers from Demo Expert to boost it, which I think will give it a substantial increase. But we've also got a bunch of other heavy guns within a similar sort of class range to... Uh, compare this off of you'll note that the um gauss minigun and the uh fire rate gatling plasma this one um the gatling plasma isn't actually boosted by demo experts so we could potentially squeeze a little bit more damage out of that but i like how there's a, like an XCOM progression thing going on because you've got the ballistic minigun fires conventional ammunition is a conventional weapon and you've got the magnetic cannon the, the mag cannon <laughs> it's so cool in XCOM 2 makes a cool noise um doing uh more damage but then you've got this thing which should be the highest tier one because it's an energy weapon but you know we need that damage to be a little bit higher so it feels like i'm playing xcom i've also grabbed a bloody light machine gun now the difference between this mostly the, the biggest difference is this thing doesn't have a rotary barrel so as soon as you pull the trigger it'll start firing it has problems of ammo capacity but your dps is there when you need it where you need it so you know i find that a particularly advantageous thing about um, the thing, and I've also got this particular heavy weapon, which one shots everything, but I'm not allowed to show off exploits, or Bethesda will get very unhappy with me. We'll chuck on some of these perks. We're going for bullet shield today. Normally, I'd grab something like, uh, lock and load, but we've got a fairly high ammo capacity, so hopefully we won't have to be reloading all that much. We'll whack on demo expert as well. I'm thinking about chucking on dodgy just for a little bit of tanking damage, but I want to sprint around, so... We'll just leave that off. Although, since we're using a rotary barrel thing, we're not going to be able to sprint until like two seconds after we stop firing anyway. So, might as well put it on. We're not going to... We're going to be a little bit more vulnerable because we can't use that mobility that we should be able to. So, that's something to keep in mind. And we'll chuck on Bloody Mess 2 for that like 2% damage increase. So, now we're doing 1, 2, 4. The uh, BE Minigun 63. This is Ultra Sight. It's all primed. And this one is 1, 2, 6. So this thing might slightly edge out, which is kind of interesting, which would suggest to me that they're calculated a little bit differently. But I think that um, gap is going to increase as we get into Nerd Rage. Um, also, uh, legendary perks. I don't usually show you these off, but I've got that full, that full. So if we end up getting a sneak critical with this somehow, we can do 40% more damage, which is massive, and they're going to explode fairly often as well. And that's for feeding the thing. Um... You could probably get away with not having this at all. I don't find this a particularly useful perk, but this one, so useful. Even though it doesn't increase your damage output, like, directly, it just keeps you going and going and going and less grinding to get your ammo back. So 100% grab ammo factory if you're a heavy gunner for sure. You might have noticed the super mutant horde just kind of happen and he just happened to spawn out in front of me. Yeah, it's not having a good day. And that was before we get ourselves into Nerd Rage, so we can go a lot better than that. Okay, so now we're down to Nerd Rage Threshold in our Wastelanders Deluxe Power Armor. And yeah, this is a Wastelanders weapon, right? And the way to get these is, um, you gotta get the legendary modules from Murmur and you craft them at a workbench and until you get the roll that you want, then you can stop. And we didn't know how good we had it with this system. We thought this system was bad, but then Steel Dawn came along and then blew our minds away on how terrible they could create a system so less complaining about the wastelander stuff please because we didn't know how good we had it so now we're doing 111 with the be minigun this thing is doing 234 versus the uh 217 so this thing is a slightly edged out which makes sense to me 
And we've also grabbed a, a BE-50, which is doing 192, but again, less um, fire rate there, so the DPS will be different. This thing's doing 180, so the differences here are quite good, and I do like that we've got the giant ammo capacity on this, so it can keep that sustained DPS going for ages. So there's a couple of good things going about this weapon, but might be good on paper. How good is it in practice? Let's see. Okay, so here we are outside of the Winter Body Pillow Factory. Order yours before it's too late. And it's actually too late because the facility has been taken over by Super Mutants. And God only knows what they're doing in here. I really don't want to think about what they're doing here. Um, if I grab Stabilized, I haven't. Gunsmith is going away. We're going to be replacing that with Stabilized. Accuracy, please, thank you. I, was, I felt like I was forgetting something. And that'll give us an accuracy bonus and a bonus to... Um, some armor penetration, which is good. Look at that backpedal speed. Is that normal? I don't know. I feel a little bit quicker than usual. We're not aiming down sights or anything. Is that bug still around? If you've got the weapon, you'll get the movement bonus. For some reason, I feel a little bit quicker today. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because my body is slowing down. The lack of Bundaberg rum, maybe. Because I didn't have any cans on the weekend. Had to mix the hard stuff with Pepsi and didn't go well. All right, so now we're doing 257 damage. We've got DPS on our side here, and I'm actually pleased to say that the uh, the Gauss minigun in this situation is actually performing adequately, which is a stark difference to how I perceived this weapon to be you know, when it first rolled around. So there's still like a couple of inherent problems. So the ammunition is heavy. It's expensive. So there's always that, but you can always grab um, batteries included, and I really do suggest you do, otherwise you get one or two mags out of this thing before we have to go back to a bench and create some more. I mean, for an XP stream, it's a good thing, but, you know, if you want to play for a long time and not have your um, crafting breakup, clearing out cells as easy as this, then, well, you, you got to equip that perk, man. you got to get that in. Let's go inside before the truck explodes and ruins the paint. Because it's not bad as enough already. Now, it might be all well and good for killing mobs and shit with this thing. But uh, when we get to some tougher stuff, this thing might hold back a little bit. Not because the weapon is particularly bad. It's just because, um, well, the damage nerf and how it's calculated and what kind of bullet sponges are in this game. Like the Milo Queen having, what is it, 8,000 health, something like that. There is a little bit of explosive damage. I'm going to shoot at the ground so it can demonstrate that. So if you suck at aiming, you can still pick up damage, but you want to be hitting those shots. All right, let's use VATS. We're going to make some use out of this extra accuracy. Go for the center mass, though, because back here we're not getting guaranteed shots on the head. Ah, aim stat bad. Righto. We've got uh, the strangle heart power armor happening. We've got a bunch of uh, dodgy shit going on right now to reduce that damage. It did receive a buff. Not a god perk, but it's certainly better than it was. Um, all they did is made it so your AP wouldn't be drained in like two seconds. Because that's what the cooldown is, right? Wow, I actually died there. Well, that was carelessness on my part and not looking at my health bar. I want to say that the um, charging of the barrel did kind of screw me over there because look at this time gap before I'm actually able to fire. And if I'm sitting there pulling my cock for three seconds or so, I'm waiting for this fucking thing to spin up, well, <laughs> I'm going to die easily because I'm not attacking. There's nothing I can do to defend myself other than, you know, play smart and in cover. But that's boring. I want to play Fallout 76 as mindless as possible because, you know, if I think about this game too much, I get frustrated because it's not because <laughs> it's not Fallout 4 and it's not great. Also, this thing does take quite up a, a lot of space on your screen. Well, that real estate, not really a, a super big fan of that. Could probably stand to turn the brightness up too, jumping at shadows. I'd, um, I'd have to go into the screen because I'm at full brightness right now, but sometimes Fallout 76 is just super dark, but I think it might be the screen. And someone commented the other day, is like, this new machine is giving you all these problems. I like your old one better, and I can totally understand that, you know. This thing has caused me a lot of grief. 
with its cooling system failing and then you know other bugs that is caused and man paying a heavy price for this one um might consider jumping ship to another manufacturer for my next one i think i think msi's are i don't feel like they're as good as they once were all right one magging white springs let's go and yep gonna get these cans because these rounds aren't cheap man and i've got the carry space thanks power armor gonna wake all of the ghouls up wake them up something something ulysses quote Actually, let's not talk about Ulysses, because I want to play New Vegas again. Alright, let's uh, get started, eh? And yes, there we go. There's a whole bunch of damage numbers. Now, I actually don't like the artifact of the, um... Fuck off, dear. I'm killing ghouls here. There you go. Killed you quick. I don't actually like the artifact of the, um... The Gauss explosion, because I can't see past it. I think the... I think the regular old legendary explosive effect is a lot cleaner because you can actually see it, but you know, it's not seizure inducing. I mean, look at the edges of the, of the screen, like the ceiling and everything, there's a bunch of flashing going on. Like that's proper seizure inducing shit. So maybe I should chuck a seizure warning on this video because fucking hell. Also, there's a ghoul stuck in a wall and you might, oh wait, we've almost got him. There we go. We've got wall hacks in this weapon. You don't have to hack for it. How good's that? Uh, and as a note to any Bethesda employer watching, I don't have cheat engine open. You have to take my word for it. Don't know how you'd utilize cheat engine though. Um, they've got a thing to pick up the exe name, but people just changed the exe name, so you could probably you know get on top of that Bethesda before people start doing some cheating shit. All right. Looks like we're done. We one magged it with 200 bullets to spare, so that's pretty good. We're slowly whittling down the amount of bullets we have, which is good because these are heavy. I think the ultrasight ones are super heavy for some reason. So these ones, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.003 each. These ones, 0, 0.005. Okay, so they're not that much heavier, but you know they'll start stacking up over time. Okay, time to utilize stabilize in a way that we can get a tight grouping from a distance, hey? We'll stand nice and still so we can maximize our accuracy. That seems to be doing pretty well. There's a crazy laser gun guy down there who is doing a surprisingly good job for just a basic laser rifle, but then again, he's probably got himself the, um, the, <laughs> the reflex sight that increases its damage because, you know, it just supercharges the entire barrel and makes the lasers that more intense. Uh, at Vault 51, they make laser rifles differently, alright? Anyway, so a jetpack is probably not good for my health because that means I'm going to have... Is that another, another legendary? Yes. Okay, you're the legendary. Yes, because I'm using up the AP and that's bad for my survivability. Oh yeah, yeah real funny game. No, broadsiders aren't funny anymore because they're effective in some situations. Uh, not some. We'll go most. Um, because, you know, everything up to a Scorch Beast, it'll kill with great confidence. And what we're going to do here is ignore that other crackhead because, you know, we're on a time clock here. We're going to utilize, uh, follow through here. That was a pretty quick time to kill. Not bad. If you want to use emergency protocols, uh, well, I guess you can't use emergency protocols at the same time as kinetic dynamo, but utilizing dodgy, you can grab um, kinetic dynamo on your chest piece and it'll actually give you AP when you get hit, so it'll allow you to have a little bit more survivability. But I think the synergization between dodgy and uh, that's another heavy gun fella. He goes down, sniping him from back here. Has some good effective range. Now, the uh, crabs have a big silhouette, so as long as we manage to pick them out in their little uh, crabby rave cave down there, the little little mosh pit that they've made for themselves, then we'll be okay. That Milek uh, King is stuck in reverse, so make sure we got to do him in. We've got nothing to aim at except the numbers that are coming up, so that's a good reference to when you're not quite sure where an enemy is. He just disappeared on me. That's good fun. It can actually tell that we're getting both the explosive damage and the bullet damage there because they're coming out of different places. And we've actually killed that Milo Queen fairly quickly. 
it's not terrible, is it? More worried about this king, however. Here he comes. He's got low health, so we'll just hold down the trigger and eventually we'll get something. Or we'll, we'll hit some. Are we hitting the grass there and doing no damage to him? Yeah, okay. Didn't realize these gauss rounds were that touchy. They just explode on contact with grass. Which, you know, is not going to stop the velocity of a 2mm electromagnetic cartridge being propelled by a bunch of, uh, <laughs> electromagnets. But, you know, I'm... Who knows? I'm not a scientist or physicist. What would I know about bullets? On that kinetic dynamo thing, if you want to go for, like, a full health sort of tanky build and... Whoops, I need to do this so I get better reload speeds. Not that it'll matter too much. We've got just over two magazines left, so, you know, we're looking good for weight, and... Yeah, ooh. For this much gameplay using... Well, 100, 1,500 rounds once this thing, maybe even like 1,700 or so, uh, after we get this magazine done. It's not super efficient. I mean, you can craft a bunch of these prime rounds, and if you've got ammo smith, you'll be laughing. Um, because it's just so efficient to make, and especially since Co uh, Crimson. Uh, the Crimson Flux is fairly easy to obtain because there's still plenty of people running Scorched Earth, which provides plenty of that. Now that is some good time to kill. Good job, Gauss Minigun. You've managed to actually impress me on this time around. So maybe it's seen a little bit of redemption, and if I could side-by-side -side a um, explosive minigun right now just to really show you, because I think there's a massive difference now. Obviously, this thing's doing over half, uh, double the damage. Or we could say that the Gauss minigun is doing less than half the damage. Depends if you're a glass XYZ type person, right? Let's just say that this glass is cooler, although it's running on magnetic technology. And that is a very angry looking death cooler who is running at me with a speed of a thousand suns. And they go pretty fast, I'll tell you that much. And luckily for me, or oh, this Scorch Beast today, we're not going to pull him outside of the hole. Hey, there's another one. I guess it's his twin. I guess it's... Wow, really? He's bolting. He is fucking out of here. The Usain Bolt of Death Claws. I've just slain him, so hopefully um, his gene pool has lived on already. But, you know, we'd like to see some... Oh, fucking hell. These guys are just taking off. Who the hell LS swapped all of the enemies? Also, these guys are dancing on the edge trying to beg me to shoot them and, you know, make them land in there. Actually, can we use physics to push stuff? We can, but it'll take a whole magazine to do it, so I'm bother with that. And that's some range efficiency right there. Verdict time, huh? And what do you know? I'm actually surprised with this thing. It, it's totally uh, caught me off guard here. I was expecting to hate it because it's a Gauss minigun, and since that first impression was really bad. Just like the first L85s in the British Army, there were pieces of shit, then they updated them, and they were actually good, but no one liked them anyway. That kind of thing. So if you're a British soldier, you know what I'm talking about. For Queen and Country. How is you how's Prince Philip going? Looks like a ghoul. I'm getting off topic here. Um, if you want to see this thing in your game, get grinding, kid, because you can't trade these. Like I said, go to Murmurs, buy things, get plan, craft them, and look. I'd say it's a bad system, but compared to what we got with Steel Dawn, I mean, just go for it. Eventually, you're going to get something, and you're going to get it much more efficiently than you could with the Steel Dawn stuff. And this offers you a way to use a bunch of those 2mm electro cartridges without, um, you know, bogging you down in weight if you're using a Gauss shotgun. I do still think that the Gauss shotgun is a superior weapon, but it doesn't. it definitely doesn't have the punch that this thing does against Scorch Beast, so... I guess that gives the uh, Gauss minigun a one up there. Is it the pick for the Gauss weapons? That's up for the user to decide. But, you know, the Gauss weapons are in a, like the, the tray of them that came with Wastelanders. I think they're up there in, they're not terrible, but they're not the greatest. But I think this one is leaning towards the greater end of the spectrum because, well, if you get a good bloodied one with limb damage or fire rate, for instance, then you're going to be you know, rock solid, you're going to be laughing. Maybe weightless too, that's probably going to be my dream role for this bloodied fire rate weightless, so I could keep this in my back pocket and carry more rounds instead. Sounds good. Anyways, that's about it for me. Thanks for watching, 
And you can tell that I'm actually interested in see how this weapon is going because I've noticed there's a whole lot less shit talking in this video. So hopefully it's not boring for all the folks out there. Alright, get out of here. Video's over.